Hey Vision Chasers, it's Dr. Bird here and I am so excited because it's been so long since I was able to talk some history with you. I've been so busy, I haven't had the chance to uh, do the research and prepare an actual lesson for you. So I'm excited to be able to do this today. We're going to talk about the menstrual show, a menstrual show in American history. So my goal in this very brief lesson, I'm going to give you just a very brief overview of the menstrual show, but you should, here's my objective, you should be able to explain how the menstrual show affected how America treated slaves, then freedmen, then African Americans throughout history. Again, you should be able to explain how the menstrual show affected the way America treated slaves, freedmen, and African Americans. So there it is. So let's begin. So the minstrel show was a form of entertainment and it was a, it was a series of, of traveling shows across the United States. Um, based on, on the research, most sources cited around 1830 is when the menstrual shows began and they really, really popped in, in popularity uh, between about 1850 and 1870. That was the height of the popularity for those shows. And these shows feature primarily white actors and their role in these shows was to mock black people by playing up on the, the different stereotypes and prejudices at the time. And what these white actors did in order to really get in character was they would uh, they would darken their face by either using uh, uh, making a, a paste out of burnt cork uh, using a grease paint or they would use shoe polish to darken their face. And we know this today as black face. And for a person to do this to their face today is socially unacceptable because of the history of the minstrel show. So I want to make this as real as possible for you. That's one of the things that I love about being a history teacher is my challenge is to take you back in time. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at some actual newspapers and we're going to look at some of the things that they were saying back then about the menstrual shows. So this first one is from July of 1931, actually July 3rd of 1931. And this is a little article. It's a review of a menstrual show that came through uh, this particular town and the Headline, as you can see here, is free menstrual show like manna out of heaven. Now, I want you to think about the time. Think about what's happening in the country. And if you really think about the context here, that may give you a clue as to why this show is seen as manna from heaven. But I'm just going to leave that out there and I'm not going to lead you, but I want you to think about that yourself. So let's get into one of these paragraphs a little bit with everyone loves a menstrual show, it says, and the audience is always composed of children, whether they be six or 60, the catchy songs, melodies of the Southland up to date tunes, the funny jokes by the end mend, the quips and rags by the comedians. And last but not least, the numbers by the entire company are events that everyone is fond of and remembers. So obviously these people had a wonderful time taking in this menstrual show. Now check this out. Here's an, here's another clue here. Here's another clue with this one, with this paragraph. It says with many out of work. Hmm. Interesting. Why would many people be out of work? The show is a delightful relief, especially when the cost of living, of some cannot include paid amusements right at this time. So that's just a little snippet of that article. And again, my purpose here is to help you to see that this is, this is really happened. A lot of people are unaware of this history and are, are unaware of just how widely accepted that the, these things were. And so that's, that's why we're digging into these primary sources to see how people live, how people accepted and, and viewed these menstrual shows. Let's continue. 
So this one is interesting. This is a, a page out of a newspaper. The year is 1950 and the page is filled with advertisements for this particular show, the All Stars, Minstrels, Burnt Cork and Variety Show. So it looks like this show is going to be, this show is going to be coming to town on a Friday and notice they're going to be playing at a local high school. And th uh, throughout this page, you'll see advertisements, people advertising their businesses and, and their services while using these images of these menstrual performers and these businesses had to be very strategic and smart about what images they put along with their advertisements so it's interesting that these businesses here they all believe that this image of this menstrual would encourage people to purchase the products and services so here's another one that i found very interesting so we have another particular show and on this page there are also other businesses using the show to encourage people to purchase their products or, or visit their business and you may have heard of this company that is using the menstrual show to increase revenue they're the jc penny company and they say i'm going to trade there and then i can afford to take my gal to the elks menstrual show but the other thing that i saw on this page was just really interesting and i, I want to read this in its entirety because it aligns with my objective for this video again how do these menstrual shows affect how America treated first the slaves, then freedmen, then African-American. How did these menstrual shows affect how they were treated? So check this out. This is the Elks Creed. Now the Elks, those, those are the, the people who are putting on this particular show, menstrual show. There are, there are many different groups out there who are putting on these shows throughout the country. It reads, I believe in the United States of America as a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, whose just powers are derived from the consent of the governed. A democracy and a republic, a sovereign nation of many sovereign states, a perfect union, one and inseparable, established upon those principles of freedom, equality, justice, and humanity for which American patriots sacrifice their lives and fortunes. I, therefore, believe it is my duty to my country to love it, to support its constitution, to obey its laws, to respect its flag, and to defend against all enemies. This is the, the Elks American Creed. Now here's another one that I found from 1921 and it's very, very interesting. This is from High Point, North Carolina. And basically this organization that was putting on this menstrual show, they, they were actually going to cancel uh, a menstrual show performance and the local citizens were so upset. And remember, they, they had sold tickets for this particular show and the citizens, they, they became came so upset that they threatened violence. So as I said before, the menstrual show is it's a traveling show that appeared in city to city and there were also uh, reoccurring characters now one of these reoccurring characters was a character named jim crow now that name should sound familiar because that was the name given to the laws that separated white people from black people in the united states i want to share with you some of the lyrics of a song titled jump jim crow Come listen, all you gals and boys. I's just from Tucky Ho. I'm going to sing a song, a little song. My name's Jim Crow. Fist on the heel tap, then on the toe. Every time I wheel about, I jump Jim Crow. Wheel about and turn about and do just so. And every time I wheel about, I jump Jim Crow. 
So as you were looking at those lyrics on the screen, that should give you an idea of the the, the spirit of these shows. The, these shows are not um, they're they're not endearing. They're not respectful. They're they're made to mock black people. And you can imagine when the, the, the kid, I mean, this is a form of entertainment. So the actor has really got to, they've got to really play it up and, and, and get into it. And this particular song was very, very popular. And the actor who portrayed this character earned a lot of money doing so. And lastly, I want to leave you with these compelling pictures. These pictures are, they have some awesome clarity and they are from 1938. And they were taken in my home state of Missouri, Sykeston, Missouri, to be a little more specific. So remember I mentioned that they, these are traveling shows. Here you see the workers, they're, they're setting up the tents where the performances are going to take place. And as we're going through these pictures, what you'll also notice is you'll also notice some African-Americans helping out with the work. Now, definitely they're not co-signing what's going to be happening underneath this tent, but they are very happy to be working because there's something going on at this time. So we'll stop right there. Um, that is a, it's a very sensitive subject, but I think it, it's, it's one that, you know, we need to discuss because there are many of many people out there who simply don't know. And so I pray that, you know, you, you know, you've been enlightened by watching this. If, if you weren't familiar with the, the history of the menstrual show and, and why blackface is, is not a good decision. So there's, there's so much more to, to learn about the menstrual show. That was just a, a very little bit there. So I encourage you to do your own research. I've included some links in the description section. There's also a worksheet that goes along with the video so that you can further um, your, your understanding of the menstrual show and, and American society and its, its impact on, again, slaves, freedmen, and then African-Americans. So I thank you so much for watching. And until we meet again, please keep chasing the vision. Bye.